Okay, so very happy to be recording this video, but basically, as always with Pokemon leaks, take these with a pinch of salt until they are proven to be true. However, I would say there's about a 70% chance that these look real. So, you know, yeah, they look very real. But on to the Terra cards. So we have a Terrapagos EX. So this guy is Colos, 230 HP, and two pretty solid attacks, actually. Unified Beatdown for two Colos Energy, says if you go second, you can't use this attack during your first turn. This attack does 30 damage for each of your benched Pokemon. And I'll talk about why that's really interesting to me in just a second. And then Crown Opal for a Grass, Water, Lightning Energy does 180. And during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic non colorless Pokemon, which is also really interesting. Now, why I think Unified Beatdown is interesting in that it's wording that you can't use this going second, that tells me that there will either be one of two things. A way to accelerate energy to these guys, so with a supporter like Welder, for example, or an item like Max Elixir, or there'll be something like Skyfield in this set that will basically say, or, you know, like an Area Zero Stadium, that will basically say something along the lines of, yeah, you can have eight Pokemon in play, basically. That's what I think. I don't think this was printed just because we have Double Turbo in format and you'll be able to swing for like, what, 130 or something going second? Like, that's it's kind of bad, you know? Like, I think Unified Beatdown has this wording because there's a way to ramp energy to this or because we're getting a way to increase our bench space. So yeah, very interesting. Also, this guy doesn't have an ability, which I just wanted to highlight because you could pair this up with Frostlass and just stack Frostlass on the bench and be cool. But yeah, just one idea there. But yeah, Crown, Al Crown Opal, sorry, doing 180 is really interesting. It's also the attack cost, which is weird. Like, I didn't think they would go this route for Trastor Pokemon. Honestly, I'd hope they do something a bit more interesting than just like Amazing Rares 2.0. But the attack cost is cool to work with. It's kind of like the colors that Lost Zone would use. So like Grass for, um, oh, what's it called? Iron Leaves, Water for Raiding Greninja, Lightning for Raikou. It is very Lost Zone colors. However, 180 isn't a ton of damage, but it's more like the walling out basic non colorless Pokemon. That's kind of cool. You're still not walling out things like Charizard, but you could always play like the cor the corner stance Ogre Pond or something to help with Charizard. But either way, I definitely think this card could be cool in Lost Zone. And maybe as its own deck, if we ever see something like Skyfield reprinted. So yeah, definitely don't think this is a bad card by any stretch of the imagination. The next up is we have Cinderace. Now, this has got a lot of people talking, for those of you who've seen it. This is like a super broken card for some people. I'm personally holding back some hope that it's broken. I think there is, you know, a high chance that it could be broken. But the thing is, right, it is a stage two at the end of the day. And if Incineroar has taught me anything, it's that you really need a way to ramp energy or be doing a whole lot of damage. Now, thankfully, Cinderace has a quite a nice attack cost in Fire Double Colors. First Strike doing 280. Yep, 280, which is ridiculous. And during your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Flare Strike. Now, why this is super interesting to me is you basically can't use Double Turbo, right? <laughs> right, again, same with uh, the Terrapakos, really. Like, you can't use Double Turbo with this because 260 is just so inconvenient for dealing with these stars. So 280, so you have to, like, sync either three basic energy or get a Charizard EX or something involved. I don't think you can just do Mela and Magma Basin. I like to think you could but I don't think you can, even with Tatsuguri now, to find the Mela. I think this is still too awkward. So Fire 2 Colors, how are we paying for this attack cost? Well, the second attack for a Fire Fighting Dark, so we could use the Infernape, which accelerates a Fire and a Fighting Energy from your hand. I know that's two Stage 2s in your deck, which aren't adding any consistency, so that's already a problem. It's not as if we're playing Charizard Pidgeot, where Charizard ramps energy, Pidgeot searches for any one card. This is literally playing something that ramps energy and something that attacks. So... Honestly, I think Garnet Volley, even though it is a pretty good attack, it's just the fact that we still have Manaphy in Standard. I know that's not really a reason to ignore these styles of attacks, but it is something to bear in mind. This attack cost is super awkward. It means you're playing three different basic energies in your deck. Yeah, I think the, the main appeal for this card, at least for me personally, is the 280 with Flow Strike. Like, that is bananas good. And this card has Free Retreat. So, yeah, very, very scary. The opponent can soften it up quite easily with a Radiant Greninja to do 180, and you know, so like things like Palkia might come back into standard, but either way, I think the Cinderace is really good. It's just the fact that 
you need so many different basic energy and you, you need three basically to get going in the first place. I think this could be quite awkward actually to actually get set up into the game. But again, Lost Zone. These are Lost Zone colors. Like if you want any ideas for Lost Zone, you could play this with, of course, Radiant Charizard, as well as the Cornerstone Ogre Pong that's fighting type that walls out Charizard. And you could also play Dark Energy, so like Roaring Moon X, for example. So yeah, it's a very, very cool card. I'm looking forward to experimenting with this if it turns out to be real. But yeah, a very cool card overall. Next up is we have my personal favorite of the four revealed, which is going to be Galvantia EX. And this is really cool to me because Galvantia doesn't get a lot of love in the TCG. So only 260 HP is uh, shockingly low, no pun intended. But yeah, 260 isn't really that good for a stage 1 EX. However, it has two super cool attacks. Charged web for a lightning colorless, and bear in mind we can of course use electric generator on the sky. It does 110, and if your opponent's active is an EX or V, it does 110 more. So 220 is just quite nice damage. It's very efficient. It'll KO boost EX stuff, and if you really want to deal with V-Stars, oh well, we can use choice belt, but we can also use things like maximum belt to get higher against other EX Pokemon. And because this guy doesn't have an ability, we can use Frostlass to soften up things like Charizard over the course of a few turns. So I do like that idea as well. If this ends up being real, this is probably the go-to deck for me personally from this set. Like, this is just such a cool card in my opinion, but yeah, just my two cents. Then I'm not even going to try and pronounce that attack name, but it does 180 for a Grass Lightning Fighting. It's a bit more awkward than some of the other ones. But you discard all energy from Galvantia, and during your opponent's next turn, they can't play any item cards. <laughs> which is super annoying, but the attack cost is also really weird. So a very strong effect in the right situation. You know, if you can't, if your opponent like can't get a rare candy Charizard off, you know, that's, that's huge. Or they can't rare candy back to Calver, that's huge. But again, you know, three different basic energy, you're not going to get this off fast, like turn three or something in Lost Zone. Or like, I, I, I still think there'll be a supporter or item that ramps energy. Like there's no way they give us these cards and just expect everyone to play Lost Zone variants. I hope not at least. Yeah, you know, I hope there's actually some supporter that ramps energy. Even if this ends up being the new broken mechanic and the new broken decks, then it is what it is. But I'd rather it was this way than everyone plays Lost Zone variants, basically. But yeah, I still think it's a cool card, though, and we'll definitely see play for Charged Web at the very least. And lastly, we have Lapras EX. So 220 HP, so kind of fragile, but I guess it's pretty average for basic EX Pokemon. Has two attacks, Power Slash, Power Splash, sorry. There's 40 damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon, which is quite cool. So if we have ways of just stacking energy, aka Bax Calibre, then that's quite nice. But its second attack, Larimar Rain, for a Water Psychic Metal. So again, Lost Zone goes, but you're probably never playing this in Lost Zone. This is like more of a, I guess we'll have to see if they release any support. Again, support or item that could ramp energy. But you get to look at the top 20 cards of your deck and attach any number of energy cards you find out to your Pokemon. So, aka other Lapras, probably. You know, this is very much supposed to be a Lapras deck. Unless the supporter is absolutely broken or the item is absolutely broken, then I think this will probably be like a Lapras meme deck, but still a very cool, fun deck at that. So, yeah. Hope these guys are real, basically. Uh, Gavanche is definitely my favorite. Just seems really fun with Frostlass. Uh, Cinderace seems really cool, also, and if it is real. And Terrapagos, we'll have to see if there's any more support for it. But other than that, it seems fairly mediocre. But yeah, Spin Out Power, let me know what you think down below. You know, do you think these cards will be broken if they end up being real? And yeah, thank you for watching.